So the role of the CPI is critical in CBRS and with the Google SAS. The CPI determines the installation parameters for devices who can't do it on their own or for whom it is required. And this role of the CPI is basically to ensure that that information is 100% accurate. They are the authority for the accuracy of the CBSD information. Without the right information, the SAS can't protect higher priority users, like for example, the US Navy. We need to protect them. We need to make sure the information in the SAS is accurate, and we rely on CPIs to do that. So when is a CPI required in the CBRS ecosystem? Essentially, it boils down to this. A category A CBSD does not require CPI certification or validation. Uh, they don't have to look at any category A CBSDs with one exception. That is, if the CBSD can't determine its latitude and longitude. If that's the case, then it has to be uh, signed by a CPI. Category B CBSD always needs CPI signing. And for those of you who are new to CBRS, very quickly, difference between a Cat A and a Cat B. Um, again, at a very high level, Cat A can be used indoors, Cat B cannot. Um, cat A can be used outdoors, so, um, but they both can be used outdoors, but Cat A is limited to six meters height above average terrain. And don't worry, the SAS does that calculation. So if you try to register a Cat A above six meters, HAAT, height above average terrain, it will be rejected by the SAS. The SAS does that calculation. Regardless, that's the main difference between a Cat A and a Cat B outdoors is that six meter figure. And of course, there is the power limit between a Cat A and a Cat B, um, category A being 20 dBm per megahertz uh, versus uh, Cat B, which is significantly more powerful. So, I like to think of it this way, Cat A is kind of like your home Wi-Fi device, a Cat B is like a cell tower. I mean, big difference between the two. And that's why we need CPIs to, read, to validate, to sign those category B devices, because they are more powerful and they have more reach and more potential to cause interference. So that's why Cat B CBSDs have to be signed and examined and validated and certified and basically okayed by a CPI. That's why CPIs are so important. Um, you can, if you want to see more about the uh, more detailed information about the difference between category A and category B devices, check out our CPI training materials or the Google CBRS Help Center. Once you become a CPI, you get three very important things. Um, I will mention that I am a CPI, so I am speaking from experience. <laughs> don't lose these things. They are very important. I didn't, haven't lost mine yet, but uh, I'm, uh, I realized uh, this is something, these are the three things that really are the most important. So hopefully this will help others um, make sure that their CPI experience is smooth. Um, the, you get three important things. The CPI ID, which is like your, your uh, ID number. The certificate file an actual file, which ends in .p12, and the certificate password. That file has a password in order to activate it, and the file and password are issued by a WinForum approved certificate authority, a, a organization which specializes in security stuff. The CPI ID, that uh, ID number comes from Google, or whoever your TPA is your, um, whoever certified you as a CPI. Um, I'm speaking obviously today with a focus on Google SAS. So, um, if you are used some other TPA for your CPI certification, your experience may differ. This is all, all the information you see is true for, for Google for sure. And I've tried to include information about other, uh, TPAs where, where we thought of it here. How do you use those C 
CPI credentials in order to validate or authorize or sign devices. There's two basic ways. Again, this is a real high level discussion uh, for the benefit of people who are wanting to learn more about the CBRS ecosystem or for people who might be considering becoming a CPI. Um, you can either use a single step registration where your private key, that, that stuff that you can't lose, gets entered into the CBSD's installation parameters. And then that gets sent to the SAS. So essentially what you do is you're signing the CBSD via the installation parameters and your private key to make sure that that information that it's using to register is accurate. And that will vary depending on what CBSD you're trying to sign. But essentially what happens is you put your um, certified information along with your password into that device to ensure that the information that that device has as its latitude, longitude, elevation, et cetera, et cetera, is accurate. The other way to do it is multi-step. And multi-step is a obviously a two-step or multi-step process. Step number one, the CPI puts the information about that CBSD into the SAS directly. For Google SAS, we offer an API or a SAS portal user interface. We'll be using the SAS portal today, and I'll show you how that works with our SAS portal, which is a web interface. So that's step one, is putting the information into the SAS, and then step two, the CBSD registers just registers with its serial number. It contacts the SAS. The SAS already has the information about that CBSD, and so the CBSD can go ahead and operate because it's been pre-signed by, uh, by, by you, the CPI. Um, I will take a moment to mention that uh, in, in passing that Google does offer CPI certification. If you want to become a uh, CPI, you can check out our CPI training and certification program. We use Coursera as our learning platform, um, but the course is done by Google and the certification is by Google. And if you are a WISPA member, you get a discount. And if you haven't noticed, that information is posted in the chat um, along with this video today. You can also do a uh, search for Google CPI uh, certification and we will come up and, and you can follow that along there and learn all about how you can become a CPI. Add something to your resume, <laughs> um, which is uh, a new and upcoming part of our nation's telecommunication infrastructure. Um, so check that out. And if you have any questions, of course, you can contact us. I'll be mentioning the support email later on. Okay, so we've looked at what a CPI does. Um, what those important credentials are, how you use those credentials. So let's look now at the top five frequently asked questions that we get asked at Google by CPIs. The hope is if you're watching this video and you're a new CPI, you will save yourself from one of these five FAQs and have a nice smooth Google experience um, integrating with Google SAS. So FAQ number one, password, which password? We have people who try to validate and they say that their CPI password doesn't work. Well, there's several passwords involved in our lives as we know. And the password that's important for your CPI uh, signing actions, your, your important action, you're signing that device, you're validating the accuracy of that device, that requires the password sent to you by the certificate authority. The CA company provides that information I went by went through earlier, those three important things. One of them is a password that goes with your .p12 file. And so that is the password that you need to use when um, when, when declaring yourself a CPI, when validating yourself as a CPI, or when installing your 
uh, information into a CBSD. Uh, the certificate authorities are Git, Google uses Insta, there's also Curio, Digicert, and Comscope. Um, those companies are all certificate authorities, and they may have issued your CPI password. Um, again, if it's Google, it's uh, you're, you've been contacted or are in touch with a company called Insta. The Insta is the only company that can change or reissue your Google CPI password that goes with your P12 file, your P12 file. So don't ask Google to change that. We can't do it. It is only run by the certificate authority. And that's because that password is valid for every SaaS uh, in the CBRS ecosystem. So it's not managed by Google, it's managed by the certificate authority. And then sent out to all the SASs. And we'll talk more about that process in a minute, um, how that gets promulgated out and how that can also lead to trouble. But let's take a moment and do a demo here. And I'll show you the SAS portal and how to validate yourself as a CPI in the SAS portal. So I'm going to attempt to switch now to the is it this? So oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, let's go. Ah, it's because it's not open. We'll go to the SAS portal, and it looks like my whoop, maybe my audio is dropping out here. Let me wait a minute. Okay, it looks like I've got um, everything loaded here and that you're able to see my screen. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll go full screen. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, I should be able to do that. So we can really see what's going on here. Okay, hopefully you're seeing the full screen. We'll get rid of this bar. And here's my device in Wyoming. Um, oops, there we go. Okay, so I'm looking at this device and I, I'm a CPI and I've logged into the SAS portal. This is our uh, SAS portal user interface for the Google SAS. I click on the device um, and then I click, I'm sorry, I click on the site. Then I click on the device here and I have all this information that I could change uh, because I've logged into the Google SAS and I can maybe say that uh, the uh, the direction of this antenna is actually 179. And I want to go ahead and sign this device. I can't do it. All I have is ready for CPI. What gives? Well, that's probably there's a couple things that could be going on here. The first, of course, you need to validate yourself with Google SAS. So let's do that in the SAS portal. Up in the upper right-hand corner is where you have your little avatar. And in that uh, when, menu that comes up, one of the things you can do is ver verify the CPI identity. So this is the important thing for all CPIs who are using the SAS portal to do. You want to select verify CPI identity. And here we get our little pop-up, which lets us put in, again, those three very important pieces of information that you get. And when you're given them, please hold on to them. <laughs> Keep them safe and secure. Don't give them to anybody else, but keep them handy because you will need these on occasion. They are special things. Um, so these three things are what we use to verify your CPI identity in the SAS. Um, your CPI ID, if it comes from Google, is going to look like this, google-tt-000 blah, blah. Um, that's what your CPI ID looks like if you are a Google CPI. For today's purposes, I'm using a test CPI. So I'm just going to, we're, by the way, we're in a, a, uh, I'm on the staging environment here. I'm not in the uh, production SAS. I'm not in our commercial environment. So I'm actually using a, a, demo, uh, a demo environment. So this is all, that's why we're, we're using these te this test information here. Um, the certificate file, this middle, uh, box here is for that .p12 file. So what I'm going to do is select that file by clicking on the little icon and hopefully you're seeing the uh, the screen where I've pointing to that p12 file. 
yours is going to be named with your um, you, by default, it's going to have the name of your C, your ID, your CPI ID. You can change that. It doesn't matter what the file name is as far as I know. Um, in this case, I'm going to click open. I'm going to open that file. And the name of the file, the name, sorry, the name, yeah, the name of the certificate, that P12 file appears here in the user interface. And I'm looking at the video and it looks like you weren't able to see where I was selecting the file. But essentially, when you click the folder, button here, it's going to bring up a file browser. It's just select the .p12 file and then click OK. And that the name of that certificate will appear here in the middle, um, in the middle box. And then for the certificate password, this is the password that was given to you by the CA, by the certificate authority. This is not your Google SAS login password. This is not your Gmail password. This is not the password to get into your computer. This is the certificate password, the password that was given to you. Um, if you're a Google CPI, it was sent to you by SMS. It comes to you from the CA, from Insta, our certificate authority. That password is what you will put in here. Now, for us today, um, the... Password uh, is, I think, Google SAS. <laughs> I will have to go check that if this doesn't work. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's just Google SAS for, the prep for this test instance here. You will put in your password. And, and now I'm going to pause because this is also important. When I click verify, your P12 file is never leaving your computer. This little box here does not upload that P12 file to Google. This box here simply checks all of the information and lets the SAS know if you're verified or not. So when we tell you don't share your .p12 file with anyone, that includes Google, and this box does not upload that file to Google. It's simply doing a check to make sure that all this information is okay. When I click verify, the box does its work and then tells the SAS user interface, our SAS portal, it says, oh, this person is a CPI. And that's all there is. If you have any questions about that process or if that process doesn't work for you, um, Watch the rest of this. <laughs> watch the rest of this video because there might be some other hints. Um, but then, if all else fails, you can contact our support department, SAS-support at google.com, SAS-support at google.com, and it will. Uh, we will be able to help you out. Now, there's one other thing I'll mention here right now. There's a bug where you have to refresh your page in order for those credentials to take effect. So, if you wanted to go right ahead and sign a device right away you'd have to hit F5 or the refresh button in your browser. So uh, that is um, an important little bug that hopefully we'll be able to fix soon. So that's the first FAQ, <clears throat> password, which password. So we've talked about how to validate in SAS portal, which password to use. That's FAQ number one. FAQ number two, cannot sign a device in the SAS portal. I validated my CPI identity, but I don't see an option to sign the CBSD. There's a couple reasons for this. As I mentioned, you do need to hit refresh right now. That's a bug. So hit refresh before signing your first device. But if after signing your first device, you still can't, I'm sorry, if, sorry, correction. If after validating yourself as a CPI, you still can't sign a device, let me show you why that might be. So I'm going to flip back to, and here, oops, actually what I should do is let me refresh because I've just validated. So I'm going to do, uh, do what I say. <laughs> And that is, I've just clicked refresh. So now my validation should be active in the SAS portal. We'll go back to full screen. Here I am. I have this device in Wyoming. 
Um, and I've got the device here and I've made some change. Maybe it's 178, some other change. And again, the only button I have here is ready for CPI. That button does not say sign device. That's what I want to see. I want to sign this device because I'm a CPI and I want to get this device up and on the air. And in order to do that, I have to sign it, but I'm still seeing ready for CPI. I've refreshed as you saw, so that can't be the problem. What else could be the problem? Let me show you. For your accounts with Google SaaS, in the lower left here, I can toggle the settings. And here is the user management settings for my for our, this Google SaaS account. There are four levels of users in Google SaaS. Admins, CPIs, editors, and viewers. And you'll notice my demo account here with the big D is listed as an admin. It's listed as an editor and listed as a viewer, but not listed as a CPI. So even though I validated myself as a CPI, the administrator has not given me CPI access to this, to this, uh, to this account. So for you, as a CPI, you need to make sure that your account admin, the person in charge of your SaaS account, has given you CPI access in the SaaS portal. And here's how you do that if you are the admin. And I happen to be the admin here, so I'm going to give myself CPI access. You click the plus button there. You have four types of users. Here's CPI. And then I type in the email address of this, uh, this uh, uh, account. And then I click share. Now the big D appears as a CPI. Let's go back and verify this. If I now go to click on this device, look at that. In the bottom, it now allows me to sign the accuracy of this device because I've been added as a CPI. So the answer to frequency asked question, frequently asked question number two is, if you're a CPI and you've validated yourself successfully but you still can't sign devices, you need to be added as a CPI for the account. And we just saw how to do that. Going back to our presentation, let's go to FAQ number three. Again, we are going to take some questions later. Um, if you have any questions that come up, you can post those in the chat uh, for this channel, for this video that's uh, probably on the right-hand side of your screen. Just type it in, type in your question about SAS, and we'll answer it during the Q&A. Also, we'll mention that these office hours happen every Friday morning at 10. So if you have uh, SAS questions, or if you're new to Google, uh, Google SAS, you can join us Friday, Friday at 10 o'clock Pacific time, and we will be here for these office hours. So you can put that on your calendar. Also, uh, many of these videos are saved in our channel. So if you click on that G Google Spectrum Access System uh, Google channel, uh, YouTube channel rather, you will be able to view some of the recent topics that we've done, some of the recent demos. We demoed uh, suspension zones last week. Uh, we demoed some new features of the Google SaaS, including grant, uh, grant reservations uh, the week before. So you can go back when we're done here um, with this presentation, you can go back and check out those other ones if you miss them. So there's plenty of great information via these uh, videos, which are archived and available on demand uh, via Google Spectrum Access Systems YouTube channel. Okay, back to the FAQs. Uh, FAQ number three, I can't wait to get started. Question, my CPI ID, it says, cannot be found in the CPI database. How can this be? I've just passed my CPI certifications. And uh, I want to get started. Well, here's the answer. The CPI cert 
oops, there's a typo here, is that you're using to validate is not yet in the WinForum database. So what that means is either you've just passed the certification exam and got your CPI cert, or you've just requested a replacement cert. Maybe you lost it, you needed a new one. The registration of your CPI certification in the WinForum official database takes some time. It has to propagate through the ecosystem like DNS if you're used to websites and registering a new domain name. These things have to sort of promulgate out through into the world, propagate into the world and uh, into the various places where they have to live in order for all the systems to work. So you need to wait a day in general for all the databases to update before you can use your uh, CPI ID and your cert. And it bears mentioning that you should always make sure you're using the latest, most recent certificate because the CAs, the certificate authorities, will deactivate your previous certificate. So once you've requested a new one, toss the old one. It won't work anymore. Make sure you're using the most recent one and wait a day for everything to propagate and then the it will work. FAQ number four, but I use a certificate manager. Uh, we have found that some people are s installing their certs in a certificate manager, if they're particularly if they're Windows users, because that's what they're used to doing with certificates. And in some types of uh, secure ecosystems, that is where you need to install your certificates. But that is not the case for SAS. <laughs> um, you will always need a copy of your .p12 file to verify your CPI identity in the SAS portal or even in the API, depending on how your system is put together. So save again, <laughs> to uh, reiterate my initial point, those three things that you get when you become a CPI, those three important things, the password, the P12 file, and your CPI ID, save those things. Don't toss the P12 file once you've put it in your certificate manager if you choose to do so. Uh, because if you can't export it, you will not be able to use it to validate in the SAS portal. You're going to have to reach out to your certificate authority and, rec and receive a new one. FAQ number five, and we're almost done. Thank you for your patience. Our demo is going a little bit long today, but these are important points for CPIs to know. Um, I'm getting a public key error. The message you get from Google SAS, the signature could not be verified using my public key. What is going on? Well, we've seen this happen. The, there's likely an error in the CPI's entry in the WinForum CPI database. Errors happen. Typos happen. Sometimes uppercase, lowercase errors happen. Sometimes an extra space at the end of a, a field, a text field happens. All these little things are just errors that can happen when you're being uh, created as an official CPI in the system. And even if everything, if you're doing everything correct, very frustratingly, if you're doing everything correct and it's still not working, there must be a problem then with the official WinForum CPI database. So what you have to do to correct that is reach out to your CPI training company, your TPA, and reach out to them and say, hey, it looks like I'm doing everything wrong, but there must be something wrong in the uh, official CPI database. Can you please check what you did when you registered me as an official CPI and update my credentials with WinForum? And nine times out of 10, we find out that there was just something, some typo, something was not quite right um, when they typed in your information for your being an official CPI. And that can cause that problem. The Google Help Center is a tremendous resource. Um, our writers have spent a lot of time putting information out there about SAS and CBRS. Uh, we've made updates uh, constantly to explain all about the roles of CPI. Uh, as these things slightly change over time, um, you can find that at support.google.com slash SAS, or just do a Google search, a Google search for Google SAS help. 
to access our help center. And again, if you have questions during the week, you can send those by email to sas-support at google.com, sas-support at google.com. I also want to give a huge shout out to James in our support department who compiled the FAQs and the solutions that we use today on this video. So thank you so much, James, for taking the time to put all that together. Really awesome. And hopefully you all found this helpful.